Many of us have older loved ones in our lives, and we may become accustomed to the lapses in memory they may experience from time to time as part of the aging process. But unfortunately for some people, these lapses in memory can become more serious and can begin to interfere with daily life. This is not normal, and it may in fact be a sign of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. It is estimated that some people with Alzheimer's have one to four family members acting as caregivers. So while you may feel overwhelmed with your responsibilities at times, you're not alone. This program is designed to help you and other caregivers going through similar experiences. Our first task is to help you understand what it means to have mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. It is not easy making medical decisions for someone else, but the more knowledge you have, the more prepared you will be to make the best decisions possible for your loved one's care. As I just mentioned, memory loss may sometimes happen as a consequence of old age, but mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease is something more. It is a progressive medical illness that attacks the brain, nerve cells, or neurons. When these neurons are attacked, the connections with other nerve cells are broken and they ultimately stop working. This may lead to a variety of problems with cognition, which includes memory, reasoning, communication, and understanding. Symptoms of these effects may include having a difficult time planning or carrying out everyday tasks, like preparing a meal or placing a telephone call, forgetting simple words or substituting unusual words in speech and in writing. For example, instead of referring to a pen, people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's might ask for that thing that you write with. Becoming disoriented to the point of getting lost in their own neighborhoods, forgetting how and why they arrived somewhere, and not knowing what they were there for. Showing poor judgment, such as wearing clothing inappropriate for the weather or the occasion. Having problems with mental tasks, like forgetting what numbers are and how they should be used. Misplacing things by putting them in unusual places, such as storing an iron in a freezer, or a watch in a sugar bowl, having rapid mood swings for no apparent reason, and showing dramatic changes in personality like confusion, suspicion, or dependency on a particular family member. While many of these symptoms may affect older people in mild forms from time to time, a combination of them, especially in their more serious forms, may indicate mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease and thus the need for medical attention. Some people live with Alzheimer's for as long as 10 years or more, so the disease has the opportunity to progress through multiple stages until it becomes severe. However, this program is geared towards patients who are in the mild to moderate stages of Alzheimer's and how they may be treated. Knowing what these stages may involve can help you prepare yourself emotionally, as well as in terms of the care you will need to provide. Most people who have Alzheimer's disease in the mild stage can still manage many of their daily tasks themselves with minor assistance. Some things you might notice in a person with mild Alzheimer's disease include trouble carrying out tasks with multiple steps, like following a recipe, difficulty performing some household chores, avoiding social situations, trouble remembering appointments, people's names, or things that happened recently. There are some steps you can take to help your loved one cope with these possible effects of the disease. You may want to ask a trusted friend or family member to help your loved one manage his or her finances. Write reminders regarding certain tasks and keep them in one place for your loved one to refer to them often. Keep a list near the telephone of names and phone numbers alongside photos of family and friends. Label the contents of drawers, cabinets, and closet doors so your loved one can find things easily. Encourage your loved one to talk about his or her feelings with friends, family, professional caregivers, or anyone else he or she trusts. Suggest that your loved one join a support group where he or she may meet others in the same situation. With moderate stage Alzheimer's disease, people may have trouble taking care of themselves. 
but they can still participate in daily activities and follow a comfortable and predictable routine. Some effects of the disease that you may notice at this stage include getting lost even in a familiar surrounding, needing help to prepare for the day such as bathing, choosing clothing or getting dressed, needing help setting a table, developing poor table manners, feeling restless or starting to wander especially in the afternoon or evening, getting suspicious, angry or easily upset, having trouble recognizing family members and having difficulty expressing things and understanding others. To help your loved one cope with the effects of moderate Alzheimer's disease, try to encourage them to stay involved in activities they enjoy, even if for shorter periods of time. Modify these activities to account for the person's limitations. Help them share memories with friends and family by creating a scrapbook or telling stories. Speak calmly and clearly and make sure you have your loved one's attention using single step commands. Plan for physical activity during the day to promote sleeping at night. Look into community resources such as adult daycare or home health care agencies to help your loved one and provide you with much needed breaks. Make sure never to neglect yourself. Now that we've discussed some signs and symptoms of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, in the next chapter we will discuss how it may be diagnosed and treated. Hi, I am Dr. Jose Pizarro with the Neurophysiology Center. There is no one test that can be used to diagnose mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. The first rule is to rule out other possible causes of memory loss, including for forgetfulness that may occur with old age. I may perform a series of tests to help identify whether other diseases or issues may be causing the symptoms of dementia, like diabetes, kidney or liver disease, or side effects of medications. For example, these tests may include a complete physical exam, urine and or blood samples. I may also perform memory or psychological tests to see how well the brain is working and to rule out other brain disorders that may be causing your loved one's symptoms. A brain scan such as a computerized tomography or CT scan will show shrinking and lesions or areas of damaged tissue in the brains of people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. Not all patients require these tests and these may only be performed if doctors think additional testing is necessary. We don't yet know whether these lesions cause the nerve cell damage or result from it, but the presence of loss of brain mass may be a strong indicator of disease. In fact, the term Alzheimer's disease dates back to 1906 when Dr. Alwas Alzheimer discovered these lesions in an autopsy of the brain of a woman suffering from the symptoms that we now associate with a medical illness. Another factor that makes mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease difficult to diagnose is that the cause of the disease are still unknown. It may be triggered by many factors, the most common of which is age, but it may also be influenced by genetics. Research has shown that the presence of certain hereditary genes may boost a person's susceptibility to the disease. Or production of harmful substances in the brain, serious head injuries, and lifestyle factors. Evidence is increasing regarding the influence of health habits on the developments of mild to moderate Alzheimer's. Smoking, lack of exercise, Poor eating habits and a lack of social interactions have all been shown to affect a person's risk for the disease. There is no cure for Alzheimer's disease at this time. However, there are a number of medications available, either alone or in combination, that seek to help with the symptoms of the disease. You will learn more about one of these medications and how it works in later chapters of this program. The current research suggests that the best treatment plan for mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease involves both medication and non-pharmacologic behavioral therapy. This may include counseling, adult education activities, and art or music therapy, 
Activities like these can provide your loved one with an outlet for expression when ordinary communication becomes more difficult. By encouraging these activities and helping your loved one to attend and take part in them, you are playing a vital role in their treatment. But remember that it's just as important for you to have the support you need to maintain your energy and deal with any emotional difficulties that can occur as you help your loved one to live with this disease. In a later chapter, you will hear from another caregiver like you who has some suggestions for coping. Thank you for taking the time to watch this program. I hope you find the information useful. Remember, if there's anything that you want to see again, simply replay the chapter and if you have any questions, write them down and bring them with you to your loved one next doctor's appointment. Please share this program with your family and friends so they too can better understand mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease and help support your loved one throughout treatment. It is also important to share your concerns with them so they can provide you with the understanding and support you need as well. It is important to pay attention to your own health and emotional well-being during this difficult time. The next chapters of the program contain important information about a medication that I have prescribed for your loved one. Please review these chapters to learn more about this medication and how to use it. There is also a section of additional resources where you will find a listing of informational websites to continue your education on mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, as well as a glossary of the terms that are used in this program. Finally, please take a few minutes to fill out and mail the postage paid feedback card attached to your DVD holder. Your comments will be shared anonymously with me and will help me better evaluate patient information programs like this for the future. Your feedback will be very useful in helping to improve future programs for other patients and their families. In addition to completing the feedback card, I encourage you to share your feelings and questions with me and my staff at any time. Communication is an important aspect of our relationship and we combine our efforts in the treatment and support of your loved one.